Dame i gospodo, sada opet mešamo malo jezike. Pa jeste sada u najavu. Sledi povratak legende. <laughs> Pozivam na scenu po drugi put danas naše gosta z Dežele, dakle iz Slovenije, Jana Žorža, koji će nam pričati o tome kako se pravi globalni Jani Kast. Molim se jedan najemni aplauz. Evo možda samo ovo. Žorž, narodnih 20 minuta su tvoji. Go ahead. Izvolite. Dobar dan. Opet ja. Uh... Samo imam 20 minuta, pa ću ja prebaciti na engleski, ako može biti brže. Ok? Ok. So, switching to English, just for Italians. <laughs> uh, so, I'm, uh, I'm Jan uh, from Six Connect, and I would like to share with you the story. Uh, this is a sort of like a documentation, how we uh, started to think about building the Global Anycast Network, and all the steps and thoughts and what we did wrong and what we, how we fixed it and what we learned in this journey through, um, uh, through the project. So, uh, our starting point. So, the parking lot. Uh, Six Connect is a global company and uh, our DNS platform uh, should be global too, right? So, we had... Um, uh, uh, when I joined the company, we had um, uh, nine DNS servers um, ar around the world, and they were named NS1, NS2, NS3, NS4, Rekatsivar. And um, I thought that this is, not, this is not the best way how to, how to do DNS. So we decided that uh, we should put, uh, we should try and, and build the Anycast. You know, Anycast is as old as is IP, right? Definition of IP because you know you have multicast, unicast, and anycast. It was defined back in the days, and I have no idea why why not more people is using it. So, how to do that? This was the roadmap. It was a very optimistic roadmap. Build a prototype, set up measurements, fine-tune the prototype, more measurements, done, right? It's easy. Sounds like a plan. Okay? Uh, not really. So, software choices. We had to choose between many of the, the DNS demons. Bind, not DNS, NSD, power DNS, which one? Well, let's use all of them. Because if you, if you patch one of them, if you upgrade, if you do the security upgrades, maybe there is a bug in the upgrade and you have one demon down. So you, if you have four of them, you still have three running. Right? and put the, the DNS disk in front of them to distribute the load um, between them. Uh, we decided for BERT, uh, for BGP routing. Uh, we were deciding between FRR and BERT, but we decided for BERT because it is a little bit easier to automate with Ansible. Uh, and of course, it would not be me if there would be no bash, uh, sad awk scripts. Um, um, uh, for, for, for running the, the whole thing. As I said, DNSD provides scripting and monitoring and also distribution of the, of the DNS um, uh, queries. We have a zone sync. This is a Python script to update, to update the zone files uh, around. We built, uh, it's called Democles. It's a bash script that queries the local uh, uh, instance of DNS dist and asks for um, sixconnect.com um, um, uh, quad A record, and if the DNS disk locally does not respond back, then something is completely wrong with this uh, DNS node, and it actually kills the, the the routing daemon to stop announcing the Anycast prefixes to the world, and it takes the whole node out of the pool. And we are managing it using Ansible, because if you have like 15 nodes around the world, then you don't want to do it manually, okay? Uh, so we started with uh, Fremont, Ljubljana, and Appledorn. Uh, I know this is not much, but it was a test, because we, we just wanted to understand how, how the whole technology works. Then we started to think about which IP resources to use. Um, how many prefixes, uh, which ASs should we use? Should we get new ASs or not? And then we decided on one AS announcing three times slash 24 of IPv4 and three times of slash 48 for IPv6. 
uh, y slash 24 and slash 48 because, because this is um, the, the smallest prefix that is still routable around the planet that you can announce and would, would go through all the filters with the, with the operators. Um, in which site we have three nodes. Each announces primary IPv4 plus IPv6 and secondary IPv4 plus IPv6. I will show you later how that works. Um, so primary prefix is with high priority, secondary prefix is low priority, and this provides us that we can switch off any machine at any given point in time and nobody would even notice, right? Because we have three of them. Now about the routing, uh, if we do IBGP to announce uh, to our uh, router at the location, we use local pref to, to manage the, the, the priority. If you use eBGP, we use prepending. That's normal. So, as you can see here, this is the layout of one pop. Does this work? Yeah, but we, we can't see it. So, for example, if this is the first node, then you see you have 252 and food. This is the primary prefix. And this is the secondary prefix. This is uh, announced with, uh, with the lower priority. Now, the same one is announced here with the high, high uh, priority. And this one is announced with lower priority. And this one, you see, is here with higher priority. And this one is with lower priority. That links back to this. OK? So if we take down this node, this prefix that is a primary traffic would start flowing to this server. And nobody will even notice. We can take down any of the nodes. It just works. We did that many times, don't worry. Um, so yeah, we have also fourth node for the measurements, but this is not um, uh, relevant right now. So um, we built the prototypes, we installed them in three locations around the world, and then we kind of sensed that we need some measurements. With Anycast, Anycast is immensely, incredibly hard to measure because from one vantage point, you just see one node. That is the nearest node. Okay, who in this room does not understand how Anycast works? Okay. Okay. Um, so, Unicast is one to one. Anycast is one to the nearest one. So, if you have around the world, many pops, and you announce the same IP addresses, then the routing will bring you to the nearest one because of the, of the preferences. And that's all the magic behind Unicast. There, the devil is in the details. The, the, the basics are quite simple. Okay, so the measurements. Who can hear us? Who can see us? How does, does people around the planet see our, our nodes? Who, which country is going to which node? How, is, how does the routing works around the, the planet? And this is immensely, immensely hard um, uh, to measure. We use route views and also RIPE Atlas from RIPE NCC. The, there is some visibility in there, but they have um, one magnitude, one order of magnitude, too low number of the vantage points around the world. Um, it can provide you some visibility, but not enough. I will show you later how it's done. So, um, while we were thinking about measurements, uh, we, we also we started de de deploying VMs uh, around the world in Tokyo using Vulture. Uh, they allow you to, to do your own uh, uh, prefix uh, announcements. Uh, so then uh, we moved our 6clabs.com domain to Anycast because eating our, dog, our own dog food. Um, and yeah, the, that domain didn't fall off the internet, so that was excellent. Um, and uh, about the control, about the, the, the system behind it, we use our own software, it's called Provision. That's a IP address management software with some network automation in it. 
And we are managing uh, all our DNS zones in, in our software and actually pushing the zones to the DNS servers um, around the world. We also use LibreNMS uh, to keep track of the DNS disk queries and also to monitor um, our nodes over, over the unicast, just if the nodes are alive, not how they are visible from, from, the, um, from the planet. And, and also, also we measure the, 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 the backend. So, um, meantime, while trying to understand how to do the measurements, we started to think about more ideas. Okay, the prototype was authoritative DNS. What about recursive DNS? Why don't we put recursive DNS on any cast? That can be done. Um, maybe we could offer a cloud-hosted IP address management solution. Can we any cast that? Um, HTTP, HTTPS with Galera DB that is a replicated MySQL uh, database. Uh, then we started thinking about having high available mail service would be nice at least for delivering messages or sending messages. Uh, so, um, yeah, we are, we are still working on, on the mail service, we are still testing it, but currently it looks actually good. Uh, it, it's not that bad. Um, then, after some time, when we were testing all this, we figured out that not all services needs to be in all Anycast locations. You can have certain locations that are a little bit more that are bigger, that is our own infrastructure and not um, um, uh, memory limited VMs around the world. Um, then um, how many services can we host on each slash 24 and slash 48? A lot. Um, then um, actually we, we started thinking uh, that um, uh, for example to do HTTPS over on the Anycast uh, we could use the HA proxy or Nginx, uh, that is the load, load balancer basically. So and uh, point the backends to the to to the different uh, point the the, the backend configurations to different backends. So if one backend fails, then it would still get the data from another backend server, and any cause this, okay. Uh, so these are all 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 the ideas that were going through our mind, and we are still working on them. Uh, one of the things was how to get a TLS certificate because we are using Let's Encrypt and when you, when you renew the, the, the TLS certificate, they, um, they actually send back the query for the um, ACME challenge thing and that can land on any node around the world that is any custard. So we had to build uh, the, the, proxy, the reverse proxy back that, that, that would uh, channel the ACME challenge request back to the central machine and, and do the, 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 the renewal of the TLS certificate there. After we built all that, I came to an idea why, why we don't do the DNS challenge. And that actually solved this problem. But if you can't do the DNS challenge, if you do any cost and try to renew the TLS certificate, you need to uh, create some magic around. Um, and then the dilemma still stays. Are we globally visible? Where are the black holes? Where are we creating the black holes? Are there areas in the world where this is not actually visible? Um, is traffic going to the nearest site? Or are we pushing traffic around half of the planet? Um, so then we started thinking about what we want from our monitoring. Um, exactly like I explained in the, in the, in the previous slide. So, um, it happened that when, when I went to Netherlands to visit Sander Stefan, uh, my co-worker, we built this together, uh, we went to, for dinner to our dear friend Remko van Mook, um, and while, while we were eating dinner and drinking whiskey and beer, uh, he told us, you know, I started the, the startup company that is doing the measurements. And I said, okay, show it. And he showed us. And I was like, wow, Remco, you just created exactly what we need to measure the Anycast. He never told us how, but they created a measurement platform 
that provided us with millions and millions of vantage points per day. And every day they were different. He never told me how exactly he did that, but the results were fantastic. You could really, really, really um, uh, uh, measure the whole thing from a, from a very granular point of view. Who is going where? So, for example, this is a map that is uh, the export from, from the tool. Now, sadly, uh, this company um, didn't make it, so this tool is not available anymore, and I now have a feeling like we are flying blind. But uh, I hope that this tool will come back at some point in time, uh, because it's really, really, the, this is the unicorn. This is the only tool that you can use to measure any cost. I couldn't find any other on, on the planet. So, I'll be very quick. For example, world map, where are, the, where are these notes? These were the notes at, at the beginning, you see? We just put them a little bit around. Um, so let's see the users and the latency per pop. So just follow the, the, the arrow. You see, green is nice. Uh, red, not nice. Red is over 200 milliseconds of round, round trip time. So why does the people from Russia go to US node? We have no idea. Uh, Miami node, you see? There is people from Africa and from India going to, to the Miami node. Why? Uh, South America, see, this is uh, Sao Paulo. This is qual quite well, well behaved because the announcement didn't go very far. So this is, this is, this is quite good. Uh, this is uh, Appledorn. What does the people from Indonesia have to do, have to send traffic to the, to the Appledorn node? There is clearly um, uh, a node in, in Singapore, right? Uh, this is Ljubljana. You see, people from, from Australia and Joburg is sending traffic to Ljubljana. That doesn't make any sense. But th these were the measurements. Uh, this is quite well behaved. Um, and for, for, you see, for, for example, in Singapore, people from, from Russia is sending traffic to Singapore, but not people from, from, from Indonesia. Not people from, from, from the, the, the region. Why is that? Okay, Oceania is well behaved. They, they, don't, they don't announce very, very, very far. You see, this is the type of measurement you need when you are, when you are building the, the, the Anycast network. Because, for example, then we added Joburg because, um, as you can see, we kind of neglected the southern hemisphere. So we, we added the, the node in Joburg. Why this is so red around, I will tell you later. It's, it's an amazing story. So those were the snapshots. So routing changes over time, right? Um, let's look at slightly longer time frame. I know, I need to rush. Slow about, don't worry. Uh, okay, this, these are about the do dominant pops. This is how it changes over time. You see, countries sending traffic to different uh, nodes over time, you see? See? This is changing. So, how the, the round trip time changed over time when we were adding pops? You see, there were not many pops in the southern hemisphere. Then um, we added the, 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 the South America one and Australia one, and it suddenly got a little bit more green, you see? And then we added the, the South African one and it got much better. So, if you, so if, you, if you try to build the Anycast network, you can do it two ways. Or you have really good measurement, and you put locations where they really matter, or you put in a gazillion of nodes and hope for the best, one or another. Um, Two well-connected peer, Joburg. We put up the node in, in Johannesburg, and this node were, was connected to an operator that was well-peered. The problem was that the rest of the world went red. Why? Because this particular transit, that is Tier 1 transit, <coughs> cogent, um, sorry, 
my, my throat. Um, we connected, we announced our prefixes to an operator that is a paying customer of, of that big transit. And when they received the, 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 the announcement from a paying customer, it doesn't matter that they received our prefixes all around the planet, in Japan, in US, in South America, everywhere. All of a sudden, this is a paying customer. And they redirected all the traffic from all the world to bloody Joburg. Well done. Usually what we want to do is hot potato routing. That's, that's what I learned 30 years ago. These people is doing cold, uh, frozen potato routing. This is frozen potato routing. They put it in a, in a fridge and ship it over the world. Um, from this point in time, we just um, put in the BGP communities. Do not export to this transit provider on all the nodes. I will still have to deal about that. And then everything back went back to normal. A little, a little bit of monitoring. Um, present state, this is the last one. So we are running uh, Anika's services for 6Connect. Uh, we are also hosting the .ua TLD because we wanted to help them uh, reinforcing their uh, TLD structure. This is for free. We are doing it just to help them out a little bit. Uh, we are also hosting other customer zones. Uh, we are building the distributed Anycasted email system for our use, uh, primarily. And uh, we are also simplifying the, the Anycast nodes. Uh, we figured out we don't need all that um, um, three or four um, um, uh, DNS demons per each node and, and things like this. Uh, may, maybe we have three different on site and, and be done with it. I'm shooting over time. Ima koje pitanje? Izgleda da ne. Možda za mene, kako tako dobro znamo slovenačke. Sve jasno. Sloba, zašto ste probili vreme? Evo, stiže mikrofon. Še jedno uprašanje. Je li to moguće da je kompanija njegova propala? A imalo je ovakav proizvod? Bio je start-up i mislim da... Od, mislim da nisu dobili dovoljno klijenta koji bi platili da, da, da bi se provukli kroz, znaš, kod start je ono. Ali mislim da to se sada nekako, da to nekako dolazi nazad. Ja mislim da to ne bi, ne bi, ne bi trebali, ne bi smeli da, da, da pokopamo, jer to je, to je ubitačno dobar tu. Zato sam htio da te vratim na to, ok? Aha. Ok. Znači, kako pitanje. start-up ode na pokopališće? Još jedna dnes. A, vezano za to, htio sam da pitam, a, da li znate za globalping.io alat? Da. Ok. Znam. <laughs> Hvala. <laughs> to je to. <laughs> Problem sa, sa, sa pingovima je to da ne znaš na koji novci došao. Jer on ti odgovara nazad iz Enikast adrese, a Enikast adresa uvijek je ista okolo. Ti trebaš da na, napraviš četvrti uh, VM, na, na, na kojega se, se, se radi neka specijalni measurement uh, iz, iz tog tula. Ili, a, ako radiš measurement, možeš u DNS requestima da ga, da ga pitaš za ID DNS servera iz, iz gde je došao. I onda kad ti on kaže nazad ovi ID, onda mo, možeš vidjeti tamo unutra da li je to Ljubljana, Brazil ili, ili, ili gde je to. Ali to je cijela nauka iza, iza toga. Da, dobro. Global ping to nema svakako. Da. Ok. Ja bih rekao da je to to. Može jedan aplauz. Hvala. Zajedno.